Well, thank you all for being here. Um, with me, I have uh, Ellen Lewis, Patricia Deserto, Jennifer Houston, Laura Rosenthal, and Juliet Taylor. Thank you very much for being here. Um, I wanted to open today's discussion with um, asking your sense of how has this year been with Casting By, this amazing documentary having come out, aired on HBO, directed by Tom Donahue, beautiful movie about the life and career of Marion Doherty, who I'm sure many of you look up to. Um, how has it felt to see the sort of toils and uh, grittiness of what you do kind of come into the mainstream? And what kind of feedback have you gotten on the film? Because I think for a lot of people, it's been a real eye-opening experience to see what you actually do, because I think there's been misconception in the past about what that means. So maybe I'll start with Juliet. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, when I, I heard, first heard about the movie, a long time ago and they started doing gratefully interviews with Marion first off because she then fell into not, not ill health pretty quickly but um, I just thought it was going to be a little sort of homage to Marion and they just made it into this film that was really so important to our community really the politics of Hollywood and the problems of in a way uh, the regard in which casting directors were held so it's been fantastic and also, it coincidentally, um, you know, came at the same time that the casting directors were given their own branch at the Motion Picture Academy. Right. And the reaction's been fantastic, yeah. both just friends who aren't in the business and friends who are. And the film's actually become a piece of activism in a, in a lot of ways for what you do to be recognized by the Academy with an Oscar. Yeah. And how, how has that affected you? I mean, the film, I think, just made um, our... Um, craft or our, what, what we do in a more three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. So even people that work with us every day, you know, I've gotten many, I'm sure we all have emails and phone calls like, congratulations, I'm so proud to do business with you, yeah. this is just amazing. And I think it's like, it's just a, a recognition of, of what it is and hopefully it will layer to, to a place where um, we are, we have, we're, we're positioned to, to continue what we do and be recognized in a more, I guess, traditional way. Yeah. I, do, I do think that it, it probably should even be required viewing for somebody sort of entering the business too. I mean, it's for directors and producers and actors and mm -hmm. casting directors to see, I mean, actors especially, you know, you know, we are such champions of them and, you know, you can see sort of that thread through the whole movie that you want them to do their best. Which and they so, don't necessarily think. And, and the movie really yeah. knocks it home, right? Yeah, I, I think sometimes so. they think, you know, our door is like closed <laughs> yeah. or whatever. But They're the afraid truth of is, you. But the truth is we're rooting for them. No, it, it only suits yeah. all of us if they do well. So really on the somebody, same side. Uh, somebody once said I was a dream killer. And I almost fell over. I was like, that's the most awful thing I've ever heard in my life. I'm like, I'm a dream maker. You know, <laughs> you just want to. <laughs> but I also think the movie is good for lay people who, because I mean, it took years for my parents to understand what I did, you know, just explaining it to them. What did they think that you did? They thought I was working for really no money and no health insurance and 12 hours a day and really didn't understand. Which you were. <laughs> yes, I was doing that. I, but, but why did I go to college? You know, why? And, and it just, you know, it was, uh, it was interesting in the first few years um, when I, because I've been doing this since I was 19. I've been doing, I did it while I was in college. So it's all I've ever done. So over the years, they've understood what I, what I do. Now my nephew is nine actually comes to the office and works with me, and so he really knows what I do, so. Um, I think that's why I think the movie's great, because I think it's, so, it's such a well-made documentary that even if you don't, don't even care about the movies, it's just interesting to watch, you know? And to also see how our favorite performers uh, yeah. got their start, and yeah. some non-auspiciously, and some, But just <laughs> you know, historically, it was great. too, to know about the history of even television, because they start, you know, so early with the with the advent of television alone. I don't think a lot of people know. And about also that. the New York roots of television. Yes, I right. think everyone associated it with Los Angeles, yeah, and that's yeah. not that's yeah. not what the way it was. And I think that people have, for years, seen this credit now, mm -hmm. even though we are, you know, fortunately in the front credits, casting by. Mm -hmm. But it's this mysterious mm -hmm. job, and so many times. Uh, you know, we aren't given the credit, and it just seems like, I guess, the actors just appeared on the screen. <laughs> they walked amazing. in off the street. Exactly. Right, right. Or the director found them, which right. I think is also the common right. misconception. And speaking of the directors, um, I was particularly struck by the very salty comments by Taylor Hackford in the film, speaking on behalf of the DGA, and he said flatly, they don't direct anything, speaking of casting directors. And I wonder how that felt 
sort of on a visceral level hearing that because I'm sure that was not 100% uh, pleasant. I, you know, I don't know. It, I didn't have a horrible reaction to it. It's kind of funny in a way because really funny. <laughs> what he's saying is what nobody knows what goes on behind a closed door. Mm -hmm. And that's true because casting is very private between the casting person uh, first and the actor before we then hone that down to bring the actors to the director. Um, so that's a whole part of it. Of course, he doesn't address at all. Are the actors, why he's meeting the actors that he's meeting? Right. And of course, that's because his longtime casting director has done her job and is presenting certain actors to him. But it is something that's very private. Mm -hmm. So partly what he's saying, uh, it does go on behind a closed door. But what, but what he's leaving out is that the reason that it goes on behind the closed door is to protect the actor who's doing something that's so vulnerable um, and nine times out of ten ends up with in rejection. Right. So that's why that door is closed. And you are the ultimate advocate for the actor in that right. case. Yeah. Right. And like any movie, sorry, I was just going to say that um, it was the perfect villain. Oh, I mean, yeah. it really is. I mean, it was a, yeah. a documentary we needed him, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to kind of add that. It served our argument yeah. more than it Because it, 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 and another part of his, his argument was that, which has always been the argument, I guess, against casting directors being acknowledged by the Motion Picture Academy was who knows where a casting director's job begins and ends and a director's job begins and ends. Well, you know that. But you could say that, you could say that about an editor, Linda Lowy or whoever yes. responded yes. to that right. in the film said, you know, but you could say that about an editor. You could say that about so oh, many. Designers. Well, the DP, yeah. the editor. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, and so it, does, it doesn't yeah. really hold. Yeah, he disparaged the cinematographers too, right. in a bit, like not just casting right. directors. And they showed, it, they showed an image of him standing alongside right. his cameraman, right. clearly indicating, oh, I'm telling you what to shoot. Well, and so I know it's all his whole thing about it's just sort of evil director. and reductive, you know, yeah. in that way of, of um, hopefully you don't remember who you bring in or whatever. It just it's it's a seamless, you know, beautiful thing once it's on the screen. And you hear that all the time, and it's gossipy, you know, like mm -hmm. oh, the DP that directed the film, the director <laughs> right. didn't. There's always that a kind of thing, you know, like it's just story, right. it's just we're really really important to yeah. the process. Right. We're a part, we're as much a part yeah. of the collaboration. Yeah. Filmmaking is a collaborative art. And we are one of the main collaborators. Right. Sure. And all your work ultimately bleeds into each other's exactly. work. Exactly. But that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be parsed out, at least Just from a crediting be, perspective. It's all the same. Right. Yeah, right. it all should be. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, what is the biggest fight or disagreement you've ever had, either with uh, a director or a studio, when you were fighting for someone and they were throwing up walls at every turn? <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I don't feel comfortable as answering the question because I don't, want, I don't want an actor to think that they had to be fought for ever. Does that make sense? Sure. You know? I don't, I don't, I, 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 more, I, I feel more uh, protective of the actor than of anybody else, not who I was fighting with, you know, but. How about something from saying, well, long I, enough ago? I was going to say, I have one, I have one, I have one. Yeah, I no, no, I have one old yeah. one, that, I have yeah. a, one old one that wouldn't embarrass anyone and the director's no longer alive, so. Um, but it's just sort of a fun story. When I was casting Julia, mm -hmm. um, which uh, Jane Fonda was attached to in the beginning, and she was at her most political at the time. This was right. in the 70s. And um, Fred Zinnemann was the director, and he came to New York. He lived, he's Austrian, but lived in London. And um, he, I had thought that Vanessa Redgrave was a great idea for the role of Julia, and she happened to be in New York doing a play, and he had never met her. And he said, I, you know, look, I've got Jane Fonda on my hands. And she's, like, you know, and now Vanessa Redgrave says she's going to run for parliament. <laughs> and I can't handle both of them. I don't want to do it. And he was a rather stern man. And um, he was really adamant that he wouldn't consider her. And I just thought it was such a waste. There she was right in New York. And so great. And I, so I went to the producer to talk to him about kind of get, how we could, you know, make this work, this meeting work. And Fred Zinnemann found out he was furious with me. 
But then, of course, she did come in, and she just absolutely charmed him beyond belief, and it was, you know, a very happy thing. But those are the kinds of things that yeah, happen. Yeah, and yeah. But you, it's hard to say. You, you, you don't want to say it with the yeah. director. Current, and, and currently, <laughs> yeah. you know, anything you're working on, yeah, you can't. You don't want to do that. And in terms of maybe take, t sort of deflecting away from the director, but mm -hmm. the, the, the studio element, um, because obviously everyone has an opinion. Um, and something that came up this year, which I thought was interesting, was actually less about the studio, but more about selling it overseas with, for Dallas Buyers Club. When, even though they had Matthew attached and Jared Leto, they still needed a quote unquote bankable overseas actor. And they got that in Jennifer Garner. And I'm wondering how, how early do those sort of concerns creep into your process? Because I'm sure that's becoming more and more oh, an that, issue. I would say that's definitely one of the challenges on you know, independent filmmaking these days. You know, you think that you have an actor that is about to break and you think you should, this actor is fantastic. You should absolutely get them in your movie. But that person only means $300,000, you know? And so you're casting for a budget as opposed to you're casting for the film. And so there's a value, saying, dollar value put yeah, on each person. A, I mean, that's yeah. the craziest thing that, right. that they have these buyers that actually break down the value of an actor with a with a dollar by amount, by territory, by but, territory. But I, yes, but also yeah. with a dollar amount too, which I thought you get the, your list back, you know, with red ink or you know, in bold, in blue, you know, with the dollar amount. So this person only means you know, three hundred thousand to five hundred thousand, and this person's a million dollars. And then you have to think about, okay, who in column B will fit in? It's almost like the beginning of casting again, where you column A and column B. I'll pick somebody from the million dollar <laughs> casting <laughs> sheet, you know, and so it's less. You know, but it's um, also surprising spontane. to me who like who means things overseas as opposed to what we think in our because right. um, a movie with Matthew McConaughey I would think of it's course right. would be you know be able to get a green light and not need any more help that's shocking to me you know so I think it's hard to yeah I mean we don't value actors like that so um, it's it's foreign it's foreign to me yeah. we don't we don't value them like that yeah. and yet we do have to think about yes. it yes. Yeah. Um, because we want people to see the movie yeah, yeah. exactly right. well you want the movie to get made too I mean it's well, you know released and if they need you know because so many movies now these days that unless you can get an actor with some value the movie's not going to go it's not going to Laura be always says I mean, that she's yeah. got so many folders on her <laughs> desk of movies that. She's waiting to see if she can get off right. the ground. Oh, yeah. Well, I remember that when, when I was starting out, you know, with your office mm -hmm. too. You'd have this little thing of all the different folders, and I remember seeing like years later the movie, and I thought, mm -hmm. I remember that folder. Yeah, yeah. It took that like took like eight years yeah. to get that movie wow. jump started yeah. because you needed the the value. You know, you needed an actor who was going to bring something to it. Yeah. So that you do that Laura is fantastic yeah, at attaching yeah. people. Are all right. Yeah. Because she really oh, made yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, it's all the same, really. It is, it, no matter what. It's, it's really the same game. If you're at a huge, huge film that's that's um, that's a stu studio where you can you can you can throw money at something, or something that's very, very small and intimate. It's the same game. You know, what, what your audience who who's going to come see it, what, it, what's the value of, of actors, and it's a people game. And once again, we're, we're those people. So we lean on so many different jobs being producing and kind of helping, you know, the director even understand that it isn't so precious anymore, or it never really has been, that you really have to find the, the, um, the combination that, that works. And markets change all the time, and you're, you're sort of instinctually aware of, of that, and you just sort of try to kind of, you know, Play the cards. And the Kids you know? Are a great example of how difficult is it to cast gay roles in movies? Because I know that I'm that movie in particular one. is. Another one. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's hard. Mm -hmm. um, I think that um, women are hard. I think that you know actors are easier um, to um, attach money to. And I think um, with Kids Are Right, I think that it was a. I, you know, Juliet would say, I'm, I'm pretty good at making deals. I learned from Juliet. <laughs> but um, I do sort of forget after I've done it because it's so intense. And you just, you just sort of try to, try to make it work. And then um, so kids are all right. It, through the script, became funnier. And I think that really helped the market. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, I don't know what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> the gay role. Well, I think yeah. it's generally women. It's women right. over an age, over a certain age. I mean, it's just sort of like 
formulaic. There's nothing that. But you were know, there several people attached to the kids are all right during the trying to get it going? Yeah, we had a slightly different cast, and then it didn't. We couldn't really get it all together, and then the director had a baby and worked on the script and mm -hmm. came back, and we really just sort of like with a wing and a prayer, just sort of went out and did it. And you never really have enough money. And it sounds sort of crazy, but it's the same thing. Even if you're working on a huge film, it's like, oh, there's not enough money, or you have to pay actors less than they should. That's an issue, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that, it, that was, you know, I'm all for getting actors for nothing when everybody else is. But it's a, it's a real drag, you know, when you're, again, us supporting actors of, you know, needing to make a living. I'm veering off to another subject. Yeah. Something people though don't, though don't know about our profession is that we do, a have to cast within a budget, and b that we have to negotiate all the agreements. The a left brain and the right brain. They're no, both people important. don't people don't really know that. Right. In the I mean in the real. And that world. you're actually involved in all those negotiations. We really are. Yeah. 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 We really are. We were yeah. trained. Julia trained us. Yeah. And yeah. seriously, yeah. Yeah. seriously, yeah. Well, we know. Mary. 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 Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know how other people mm -hmm. are, but um, yeah. um, I I don't know about you guys, but sometimes even though it's it's really hard. But it's sometimes fun to just not have an like you have an opinion in another way. You have mm -hmm. to get the job done. I mean, I think I think what people don't. I mean, I think people don't realize how creatively involved in huh. everybody who's on the screen. But then they also don't realize just what we're saying that we're involved in all the negotiations and then the scheduling. Mm -hmm. So in fact, producers work so closely with us. And because we did all work for Julia, um, we're in, we're always anticipating a problem, and then trying to circumvent that's that problem. That's what Ellen taught me. That's what Ellen taught me. <laughs> No, that's what she said to me. Anticipate, anticipate, anticipate. Right. Right. And then I do it in real life now, too. It's, like, it's crazy. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it makes you right. It makes you slightly upset. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. And, and you, you believe it's going to happen, and you prepare for it. Right. But I think that it's what makes, um, as I said, a lot of producers appreciate all of us, and agents also, because we're just constantly communicating yeah, yeah. what might be happening. Mm -hmm. Here's what's going on. Yes, your client could do that for a day, but then we're going to need them this day. And they come to trust our work. That's what I was going to yeah. say. We've all, hopefully, we're really good at what we do. And I think we're good relations, communication, and trust. Mm -hmm. Well, and that feeds right? in perfectly to my next question, which is why do you think this field is so dominated by women? Because all this, the skill set and multitasking that you've just described, I think we would all agree, not necessarily not found in men, but more possibly co more commonly found in women. And I'm wondering what aspects of that do you think yeah. really actually make this a, one of the few female-dominated corners of the business? I think it came up in the in the film casting yeah. by that that uh, Marion always used to say it was because we get paid so poorly, but <laughs> which isn't so true anymore. But that's how it started. It, um, it, meaning that women were willing to take the jobs early on because they weren't. And, and, and many men who started out doing it moved on to do other things that were more lucrative. But but that that's that's an, kind of an old story. I think story. it is old. I think we really do do yeah, better. Now, now. I mean, that makes yeah. sense as the inception, but now it's grown into Yeah, it really has. Yeah. But I think there is, yeah. a, and maybe this is a sexist thing to say, but I, I do think that it's a very intuitive job, and I think that that is definitely a strong point. Right. Can you also say, too, that that I think women have a kind of nurturing quality right. too and that the, mm -hmm. yeah. the many very different difficult at time personalities right. between directors and producers and uh, that we're able to sort of negotiate that right. and sort of you know and I don't know if you ever said that I don't think I think you said this Julia but it's sort of like it's like hosting because you're introducing people to other people mm -hmm. and making them all feel comfortable and it's sort of that kind of a dynamic that you have to set up in a room that can be really artificial and yeah. really scary and really uncomfortable. Or killing dreams like someone. Said. Or be a dream killer. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but I think I truly think it is like a very you have to be comfortable with pe enough be comfortable enough with people to be able to bring them together and make yeah. them feel comfortable. Well, and also yeah. if an actor doesn't feel at ease that he or she's probably not going to well, do no. well. Right. Right. right, right. Also, I think it requires a high tolerance for you have to actually appreciate and enjoy people that who might not be very likable, <laughs> and you, you have to say that person's really talented and not let the fact that they aren't that likable or not a nice person get in the way, director or actor. Mm -hmm. I think so you have to get past that. Yeah, you're kind and of I, running interference I, I, I think, too a lot. I think that yeah. 
women are better at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think also questions. We ask a lot of questions. I think and aren't that afraid to ask questions. Probably. Yeah, and that's a lot of. That's how you get your information, and that's how you right. sort of intuitive what's up. And then even by asking questions on the other, it's like the right side and the left side of the brain kind of really working perfectly. Mm -hmm. And we're just smarter. Our gender is just smarter <laughs> and just, you know better at <laughs> that. You know, I mean, it's right that. Just, yeah. And yeah, then, then, then we know how to. Yeah. Yeah. No, and then you know how to make the deals, right? So it's sort of like taking it both, you know, perfect, the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you talked, it, the image of your folders now is in my mind, and, and I think about your folders and also Marion's note cards, which I just oh, love the oh, idea that yeah. James Dean, you know, very pleasant, you know, all the fun know. notes that she said about yeah. him. So charming to think of all these amazing actors being summed up in a couple words. Um, and I'm wondering how, how has the process changed um, with technology? I know a lot of people audition via Skype, a lot of this is computerized. Do you, are there still vestiges of the folders and the note cards that you keep to keep yes. your tally fresh? We, we keep it, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah. You know? I, still, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm right now having casting sessions. Mm -hmm. We're we're taping them, right? Mm -hmm. Because in many ways now that is how directors and producers are viewing people. But I'm sitting there in the same old-fashioned way mm -hmm. of somebody walking in the room chatting with them, reading them for the role, yeah. and thanking them and having my assistant or associate walk them out, thank them again for having come in, right. and, and writing your notes. And then, yeah. and then yeah. writing my notes. Do you type notes, or do you yeah. actually handwrite them? I still, handwrite. I still write mine, yeah. 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 Still yeah. We have like a schedule, session right. sheets, and we just right. write, and we keep those. Oh. So that's still and the same, but also, yeah. does it, do you guys, when you make your lists, sure. oh, yeah. do you write it Handwriting still? It. Yeah, of course. So I think yes. we all do. So yeah. all those things, yeah. again, were passed down, like the way that our session sheets are typed up. Mm -hmm. um, for yeah. ourselves, it was from Marion to Juliet. Right. Like, when I worked for Juliet, I know, oh, right, this is how mm -hmm. yeah. Marion did it. And for us, we put the agents down. But when we yeah. have our director sessions, we never list the agents. <laughs> This and yeah, you know cool. and um, but the I mean it's there I think there's nothing more fun than having sessions with actors and seeing who is right for the world that you're right. helping to create. I, mean, but, yeah, I think there are more um, casting directors who are now sort of using. Uh, the internet to find more. I think you're able to find a, a larger well, an community of actors, you know, on YouTube yeah. and and uh, you know, then you create the, your favorites list early on, and then possibly I think I think cast directors now have Facebook pages that you know actors they can come on and, and they can like and submit you know their mm -hmm. pictures and, and videos right. and stuff. So I think it's much more of a kind of instant mm -hmm. way of being able great. to find There's actors. There's some really great things about being um, an actor being on location yeah. and being able to send yeah. a, right. send something yeah. immediately and they actually have a shot at getting right. cast for yeah. sure. Right. Yeah. So there's that kind of speediness of that, but what's, which is wonderful. It's interesting yeah. because obviously people are self-taping, mm -hmm. but I think that what gets complicated about oh. that now is the fact that you know you will get ideas from agents, mm -hmm. and we go through all of those ideas, and I carefully, we all carefully go through those those ideas, and then we call the agents and tell them who we want to see. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, you will just start getting self tapes, mm -hmm. and that's where maybe you it's know, getting too much into what stop. we do. But they didn't have if, <laughs> no, if a, a self tape comes that you weren't request. Right. I think right. the best thing to say is, it's like showing up for an audition without an appointment, sure, right, you know, right. and you just like have to put your, yeah, right, right. So and that's has hard. That, has that replaced the picture and resume being dropped off at your door? No, <laughs> no, they actually, they actually put themselves on tape. No, it's worse. It, hell, it, it's I mean, it happens. Worse. I mean, for me, because I've been doing television for the past couple of years, more than films, um, and the turnover time is so quick with television, mm -hmm. the advent of all this internet access has it was unbelievable because I started out as the casting assistant on Law and Order. I had to type all my deal memos on a typewriter. I had to fax sides to actors. If you wanted a script, you had to come pick it up. We did too. You know, and so I mean, it was the same time, but it, the, before the computers came along. Now my assistant and that you called every single agent to put out the appointments. Now they do it all through email. You can send a script, sides, anything, and it's it's amazing. Yeah, but you think, the only, but then you don't say, learn. But then you don't learn. No, but that's the yeah, one thing I that, that's that I, I, that I, I and that's why think, you're all good at your jobs because you had to. Do all those things. The one thing on. that I, I do miss, though, with some of the assistants now, is that yeah. you know when I say, "Can you do me a favor? Call the agent and maybe go over. Right. Uh, we need uh, um, some ideas for this character." Right. 
they automatically go to the computer and start to, and I was like, no, pick up the phone. <laughs> I think you, you there is something that lacks. Some things like, are not right on the right. Yeah, I yeah, think, exactly. I think, especially on Woody's movies too, that because we don't put out a breakdown, that that conver that initial conversation right. with the agent is so vital the, because you get the nuance. Across. You get the nuance of it, and and you know because we're not going to sort of just type, uh, you know, a quick line about the breakdown of the character. You really want to get the agent to understand the process and what you're really looking for, and and. Um, and I and I feel bad that so well, many people are now just quickly. That's a luxury. It, 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 it you can't is have. a luxury, yeah, yeah. but I I think that this is something that a lot of TV executives and studios don't again understand mm -hmm. about what casting is about, and I think that the casting directors are under so much pressure, and to do things so quickly, and to have like. Oh, you know, it's more about volume oh. rather than what the actual creative process is. And I actually think that all of those executives should try to cast something at some point. <laughs> I think we should switch places. <laughs> I really do because it's they crazy. They just take it for granted because it's can, always done right. so well, I think. And because right. casting directors are just doing it and they're working till 11 or 12 at night. And it's not right. And I think it takes a lot of the fun and and as I say, really the creativity out of what this process is. And um, I think they should pay attention to it a little bit more of what this is. And I hope that that is something, the casting by, because I'm hearing so much from actors, it's amazing, but always coming into your office is such a different experience than other places. Right. Yeah. And I'll say, well, I think that a lot of people, if you're going in for television, those casting directors are great. They just are under so much pressure. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Totally deluge with yes. stress. Um, speaking of actors, I, I would love to know, I'm sure a lot of them ask you for advice all the time, um, and I'd love to know what you tell them never to do um, in an audition. <laughs> um, touch you? I was going to say yeah. touch us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, handshaking is fine. I'm all for handshaking, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not. I'll always do it. I'm my I'm my father's hey. daughter, and I'm like, hey, how are you? But um, but yeah, when I was an assist an assistant in LA one time, it was a it was a it was a um, scene with a gun, and this guy got like I was reading with him, and was had like the gun to my head or something. Or a director would be like, could you actually sit up there with the actor and read right next to them? I get I used to get that a lot too. I even even recently too, and that's uncomfortable for me. So I'm not I never acted a day in my All life. All you're doing is feeding lines. So right. well, not feeding lines. I think there's a difference between. I think there are good readers. I, I do think there are people that just feed lines, but I try to at least give them a little something. But getting like that close, and you're like talking to an actor yeah, yeah. so. close in their face, like as if you were an actor, is the freakiest there so, thing. There were so many years, and I guess it was influenced by the actor studio, where oh. you were, you really were, actors were physical with you. I had my oh, shirt ripped yeah. once, oh, yeah, yeah, no, and they kiss you, well. and they, yeah, but you, you, yeah. Have, you have, get you have, naked, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they wouldn't do that if you were men, most likely, <laughs> right? Right? No, but it's, you know, it's, I was offered three thousand dollars once to from an actor to meet the director, and I told him that was not the way. To do it. And I actually had that actor come in and then later heard that he actually had a gun with him that day as well, which oh, also Lord. wasn't really a great idea. But uh, I'd love to ask you who this person was. <laughs> <laughs> All I'll say, it was on Goodfellas. <laughs> that was my next question. And I did schedule a policeman on yeah. either side, <laughs> cops that I was trying for the movie, I put on either side of that actor and told one of them, like, this guy kind of scared me. So Did he just make the cut for the movie? He's in the movie. That's yeah. what I suspected, yeah. yeah. See, that's a per see, that's perfect for that movie. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, go back, to go back to your question, though, I think I think that one of the things that happens that's upsetting is if you you meet an actor and you're really taken by them, and then they come in on the day of the audition, 
and they've done some dramatic change to themselves. Oh. Like they yeah. put on a huge so amount of makeup, yeah. or you mean to look more like what they well, think no, the role they is? Think right. Maybe to look prettier, or they think they're they think that part requires something, and they do something very specific, and you kind of it kind of freaks you out. But I've said to people. Yeah. Do don't, don't yeah. do, do anything, anything different. different. I said that too. I'm like, well, do, do it exactly right now. Yes. Right. Do this tomorrow and don't change anything. I think it's also good when actors, you don't see them working at, at the audition. You mean taking like, a moment before? I need to take a moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, um, I think it's great to do your work, but when you come into the room, well, especially with the director session too. I mean, I can talk. I mean, I tolerate anything really. But I think if you're in a director session and they do that, I think people think already judge you, judge you uh, on that. Simplify. Yeah, exactly. Well, and don't Simple. the actors who get the roles generally the ones with the most ease, and you're not aware of them working? I mean, those. Are, well, you know, I think it varies, yeah, and it I does. think it's, it's so. Hard. It's hard. You know, it's so hard for an actor walking mm -hmm. into a room. It's hard for them walking into the room for us. It's especially hard then when they're coming in for the director. And, and listening, you know, as listening much as we really can mm -hmm. do to ease their mind yeah. and to be encouraging to them and, you know, give them as, you know, this is something else I think that we learned from Juliet is to give actors as much information as we can mm -hmm. about the role, about the director. I mean, I, you and know, obviously for years when we would set yeah. up people yeah. For Woody Allen, please know the meeting will be 10 seconds long. There's truly nothing to be nervous about. Mm -hmm. It will be over before you leave. <laughs> it's like a doctor's appointment. It sort of is if you're going out. When you, and I do that so. too, yeah. If I'm in a session when the director is giving direction to nobody, because that happens sometimes. They let the person do it once, they say thank you, and they leave. I go out into the waiting room, and I just tell everybody, I'm like, listen, you're not going to get any adjustments, so don't think that you didn't do anything, uh, that you did something wrong. Because yeah. because actors always wait. They're always like, they they're done, the and they want, they want something done. Done, but in those situations, I always kind of go out there and kind of whisper. It's to nice of you to tell them that, though. Well, because I don't want them to feel like they did right. badly. You know, I just I want them to know that you did a good job and they're doing it to everybody. Right. You know, because so. they don't know. How no, everyone else of course is not. Right. Yeah. Right. So they're not in the room with everyone else. No. No. Um, I'm curious. I sort of think of Grey's Anatomy as a as a big milestone in terms of the colorblind casting approach, or sort of famously, a lot of those roles were not written for the actors who ultimately played them. How much leeway are you finding with scripts now to cast people of you know, different ethnicities or different races that's not necessarily in the script? And you know, how much freedom do you think you have in, in those circumstances? And I know TV is very different from film in that capacity, but what, what's that experience like now? Um, I, I, don't, I haven't run into anything. I, I've, I've, I have great freedom, especially on Orange is the New Black. And, that being and, a great example. Yeah, of I mean, I, I, you know, they're amazing, and I bring in for one role, I bring all different ethnicities in, you know, white, African American, Latino, everything. And they just choose the best, the best actor, you know? And that's really, I'm really lucky. I'm really, really lucky. It depends, yeah. you know, like I'm working on a period movie right, right so, now, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sorry. Um, and it just wouldn't be right for um, certain ethnicities to, yeah. to be, be in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but always to be open. Juliet, right. how about how does this play into Woody's films? I know he's, you know, he, he writes for all different types of actors, and I'm wondering how much flexibility has there been with some of the scripts you've worked on. Like. Well, you know, he, because he writes, in, he used to write stories. Now he's shooting in Europe a lot, but he he wrote so many movies that took place like on the Upper East Side of New York mm -hmm. that it didn't offer itself to a lot of diversity. So he's particularly conscious of it when he can. Right. He likes to. Like casting Hazel Goodman yeah, she, yeah. in Celebrity, that wasn't written yeah, right. uh, for an African American actress. Um, he he's very conscious of, of it because he knows what he writes is not doesn't naturally lend itself. Well, shooting in Europe lends to more diversity too, probably. Well, European, European. <laughs> at least at least European, Western right? European <laughs> diversity. diversity is very subjective, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any stories like that? Um, has it has this figured into well this, in the story and casting by a Lethal Weapon? Oh, right, of yeah. course, that Danny was Glover, right. wonderful. That was yeah. so amazing. Yeah. I was there. I was at that Ardios, and I emailed you immediately after to tell you that story because it, I was almost in tears and I couldn't believe it because I was in LA at the time, and I was like Juliet. He just said the greatest story about Marion that I've ever heard, and it was beautiful. It was and, very touching, and and that's something to always keep in the back of your head. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's really important. And I'm sure that there was resistance to that. I mean, they didn't get too much into it, but I'm sure that you know, once the director sure. saw Danny Reed and thought like, wow, this is great, 
But on paper, when Shane Black was writing that script, you know, he probably envisioned two cool white guys, and, mm -hmm. and but that's great, and it certainly wouldn't be the same franchise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm curious, you know, we, we talked about gay roles and sort of the the inverse of that is gay actors trying to play a breadth of roles, um, and there are actually very few gay or actors who are openly gay who mm -hmm. play straight roles and are able to do that with a degree of success. And do they ask your advice in these situations of how to protect their private lives or have no, you ever been I haven't approached? Had that. Um, because I know it's very, it's very difficult, and um, I feel for actors who I try know. to. Yeah. Neil Patrick Harris being one of the few yeah, people who's right. been able to do pretty much anything he wants, yeah. convincingly successfully, and uh, Matt Bomer as well. But it's a very, very, very yeah. small pool of people, especially more so for women. Um, so I'm wondering how, if you've ever had interactions with actors about it, this. It, yeah. it seems that, that the men and women who are in sort of the more romantic yeah. category really just sit on it. They just don't let yeah, people sure. know. Right. I know Ellen had a terrible experience on Mr. Wrong when she was playing opposite Bill Pullman, and she has spoken of that as, and she was sort of not really out at that point, but thinking about her trying to play that part, it kind of hurts to think that she was trying to pursue something that maybe wasn't a natural fit, and mm -hmm. I just wondered if you'd That's ever worked That's been going on for a hundred years right, in, in film, I mean, to film, yeah. film, I mean, Rock Hudson. The less so for women, go, I guess, yeah. we're more used to yeah. the male story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been going on forever, you know, and I don't think that's ever going to change, unfortunately. I really don't think it's going to change. I don't think so change. either. I think there's going to be more roles right. for, for gay and lesbian And it has actors. gotten better, of course. Yeah, I mean, that's right. on Orange. Right. It's amazing. I get to cast, right. like, the You don't best. know who's gay and who isn't, and it doesn't it matter. It doesn't matter, <laughs> and they want it. You know, it's right. just, it's fantastic, and it's given so many and actors. And Glee, too, of course, has been amazing for that. Right. It's given them so many opportunities that were never there before. I mean, I cast a transgender woman. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it was like they wanted a real transgender woman, and I and you have to find that, you know, and an, and an African American transgender woman. So it was even narrowed down more. So, you know, we gotta love the prison setting because it really allows for <laughs> anything. <laughs> anything. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yeah. Did you put out a breakdown for that? Did I, I did put out a breakdown for that. I got about um, 10, 10 submissions. <laughs> There's really not, you know, an acting community, but I did it, and I did it. I tried to do all over the country so I could just just make sure I covered my bases. Mm -hmm. And I got people going tape in LA. And But Laverne came in. I'd read Laverne before, because I'd worked on a film um, that hasn't come out yet that where we had a um, transvestite. We ended up casting a guy who, who dressed up as a woman. But well, Laverne had auditioned for me before. And I, I loved her. I just thought she was gorgeous and just so, uh, she just had such a great attitude and she could act, you know, and she was wonderful and... Did you have her in mind then when you got the orange well, script? As and soon as I read the script, I was like, Laverne has to do this because <laughs> I don't can't think of anybody else in New York who's going to be able to do this. So please be available and please do this. And uh, yeah, that was, that was just the perfect fit. I'm know? sure she, I'm sure she was very grateful. <laughs> the whole orange cast is amazing because these are character women, these are minorities, these are older women that never got these opportunities to have an arc on a TV show ever. They would play like nurse number one in Law and Order. Right. Now they have 13 episodes to develop a story. And it is, it's so moving for me because they're just such good, they're women we've been bringing in for years and years and years and you guys have all cast, you know, and I've, I've just, I had the benefit of, of all of that, you know, and I get to cast, you know, Broadway people that never <laughs> get to do TV, and it's, it's a blessing. It's truly a blessing. Absolutely. Um, and I, I'm wondering when you do, you know, get to those kind of um, smaller off-Broadway shows and you're, you're really taken by someone you've seen on stage, how quickly do you share information about that person, or do you keep it to, to yourself as sort of like your own private discovery? I think we share it amongst ourselves, yeah. Yeah. right? I, mean, I share it with everybody. I'm kind of yeah. an obsessive fan, as Ellen will <laughs> attest to. So, well, I think yeah. that, you know, again, it depends on what we're working mm -hmm. on. So it's not like I'll go to something and um, say, oh my god, you guys have to see this person. Mm -hmm. I mean, Juliet's one of the best at that, like mm -hmm. going to see a play and then writing an entire synopsis for us <laughs> and her feelings about it. But I don't think the rest of us quite do but, that. But, but uh, I don't know, I think we all went through a long period of keeping a lot of stuff to yeah. ourselves because Marion always used to say, you know, that's, that's your information mm -hmm. is what right, you got. Lists are, your lists are your, list are your yeah. lists. Right. And if you've seen somebody and you think they're great, you, you know, if you have something for them in particular, but we tend to with each other. We share with each other, yeah. but yeah. actually, 
this is something that we learned, that Juliet obviously learned from Marion, and we learned from Juliet, which is, in fact, we are very secretive and very close mouthed <laughs> about things. And That's what I had, a I lot had of sense. people know that about yes. us, actually. Like, also, we do not give out information. And being in New York gives you, not that LA doesn't have theater, but you probably do feel you get exposed to these little gems that, you know, the rest of the country is yeah, not. And, and all of us, one of the thrills of, as you were talking about, one of the thrills is being able to use someone who's never been seen before in an original way. It's yes. just right. one of the yeah. perks yeah. of our it's job. Amazing. Sure. It's amazing. Is there someone you've discovered in a small context like that who I you would? I never, yeah. I've never discovered anyone. I think that's a very, you have to be very careful with that word because inevitably, some, they, especially if they're an agent and manager or if they've done other things, people have given them jobs before. I always feel like unless they I- They may pluck, have already thought they were discovered. Unless I pluck somebody off the street that has never done it before, I, can, I would never say I discovered right, or There might be something successful, yeah. like, you know, I remember having an open call and mm -hmm. casting the person from the open call versus a, the actress who was a little bit was much more well known. It was mm -hmm. between two people, but she hasn't gone on to become like a huge star or anything. And I think it's it's really important for us all to kind of when we do a job, we're doing the job, and it isn't it's it's it's. That fit discover. is yeah, it's, so it's, great, and so I could, I could, I probably have more examples of people that <laughs> <laughs> haven't gone on to become really big, or, or I've worked on movies that I think I'm really proud of, that I think are I'm very connected to, but mm -hmm. they weren't a huge success. But um, I, I think the art of what we did is 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 couldn't have been better. Mm -hmm. Well, so the, 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 like for example, like Annalee Ashford in Kinky Boots. Mm -hmm. You know, I would love to cast her in a in an independent film, mm -hmm. and want to. But at this point, it's still she's still very much. I mean, she was on Masters of Sex on Showtime, which was great, but she's still not a name yet that is going to get recognition for a budget or for box office wise. So you can't. Right. You know, you would need if you, you were doing. She'd have to be a side. Project. You know, like a small right, part. Right. But she's, right, she's someone yeah. that you get so excited about. Yeah. And you think, oh, she's fantastic. I just would love to cast mm -hmm. her in something. And so you feel like yeah. you just have to keep hoping that she's plugging along. Be her advocate, you know, just continue to support her. Yeah, you know, even Asa Butterfield, who was in mm -hmm. Hugo, he had been in the Boy in the Stripe, uh, Boy in the Stripe Pajamas, right. and an Annie McPhee right. film. Right. But what I always say, it, you never know what's going to shine the light on exactly. somebody. Right. And even you know Brian Cranston, I know. who <laughs> I have nothing to do with that show, but. This man's right. been working for years, yeah. Yeah. and then and almost more so now than he ever something was. always. He was always working. He was on Seinfeld. And now he was the dentist. Yeah. You know, so but, he's, but he's a big movie star now, though. That's I mean, right. he's, exactly. he went from being he's Tim Watley on Seinfeld to role, right? you know Malcolm in the Middle. Of course, I mean, it was, you know, and there was huge. resistance to cast the goofy dad from Malcolm in Breaking Bad, and yeah. I think that right. I mean what they did on that show was superior, but they had to fight for him for that part. Right. I don't know the story. Yeah, so that's what you can do: is you can champion people, you can believe in people. It is. Right. And keep bringing them in and yes. believe in them. <laughs> but you, but I'm with Jen. I don't love. I hate the word discover. So well, there are lots of casting directors who who love, you, to, who love to say that. I would never take Obviously, credit for and that. they were not invited to be here today, so that's why you're all here. Because um, ultimately, we just we open a door for people. That's our, that's our job. They do all. They you. do the work. Right. They do right. all the work. Right. They get the job. You but know? you are an advocate, so don't don't discount. No, no, of course, of course. And you're giving them support that you know oftentimes they're not getting from their agents that they're sort of floating along, feeling isolated and alone, and no one wants me for anything, so I feel like seeing your face when I walk into the room is mm -hmm. probably meaningful. Mm -hmm. Since you don't like the word discover, maybe <laughs> you can say, what is a moment from your career where you really felt proud, not necessarily of you and what you had done, but proud of an ensemble you helped to bring together, or maybe you're at an award show and you saw someone win something, you thought, wow, that's great, mm -hmm. that's a great moment. I would say, um, I thought Midnight in Paris was sort of a, a highlight for me too. I mean, to the amount of work that we had done of all the historical characters, and that was um, tough to and cast, really sure. find mm -hmm. out. You know, you know, really learning about um, Hemingway or Picasso, or really, and then and then finding the essence of who they were, and not just getting a kind of carbon copy lookalike. You know. Um, and Corey Stoll great. really. I mean, yeah, had he not had his breakout on that movie, exactly. we wouldn't know yeah. him from House of Cards and. And he was, he's a perfect example of someone who'd been working for years in New York. Yeah, yeah. Sort of a Well, not, not years, actually. Not years. He'd only done, I believe, he'd only done a view from the bridge. Right. 
Well, yeah, but, but I've, I've been, but was bringing him in mm -hmm. a long, for a long time, just trying him for even day play. I was part bringing him for like cops and stuff, you know? Right. So, and then it was great how you guys transformed him into to, <laughs> to him. It's Gave like, him hair too, which yeah, was, really which was great, yeah. <laughs> um, for, the local boy. Yeah. I mean, he's a local, mm -hmm. he went to LaGuardia High School, yeah. you know? I mean, I mean he's a, a for me, boy. on Girls, <laughs> I have to say that when Adam Driver got nominated for Best Supporting Actor for an Emmy this year, I couldn't have been prouder. I was so proud. I didn't care about anything else. I was just so proud of him because um, cause I had loved him for so long before he got cast on Girls. <laughs> and then when he did, and he did such an amazing, and he just, he just did such an amazing job that it, it, I mean, that almost brought me to tears, you know? Well, was, and the fact that, too, then that show blurs the lines between comedy and drama so yeah, much that, yeah. he, that his performance could be perceived as comedic right. and he's actually so absurd and sort of dark, <laughs> but in the best way possible. Yeah. Um, I was very yeah. equally impressed with that. But too. when he got nominated, like somebody that they actually noticed. That Alongside the Modern Family cast, it's not bad. <laughs> that was amazing not for me. I was so proud of him, you know. So. I don't know if I can think of a yeah. specific uh, film feel lucky, lucky about a lot of groups yeah. I put yeah. together. Yeah. I mean, not a lot, but you know. Um, and it's so much fun casting all the small roles mm -hmm. and doing the day players. I always say this because <laughs> I worked for Juliet for eight and a half years, and so I'm always more comfortable casting the day players. So yes. I love it. <laughs> like, really, do I have to do the leads? Okay. <laughs> But, you know, it is so much fun. And they're so grateful, too, I'm sure, oh. you know. Well, it's not about, you don't, I mean, I don't know. I never looked at this job as something to, to gain any kind of appreciation. <laughs> I just like the work. You, you know? guys are too modest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'd say a highlight isn't a film. Mm -hmm. It's a repeat, repeating the relationships that mm -hmm. I have right. with directors. I feel so blessed. Mm -hmm. um, by that, and and I think I am part of that. Mm -hmm. That I've um, I'm attracted to people, and they're attracted to me. And I work with pretty much really great people, um, directors and producers. Right. So I think that's a highlight mm -hmm. that that I get to work with people I want to work with yeah. again. Yeah, that's true. You know, that want to work with me. that are loyal to you. Yeah. Right. Whatever it just yeah. works. You know, yeah. somehow it ju just works, and you know, d it may not one day, but it's it's. It's working right now. So. <laughs> it okay. seems to be. Um, and if, if you could give your younger self a piece of advice, say when you're just starting out about, about the business and about being a casting director, what would you tell her? Work for Julia Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Work for Ellen Lewis. Work for Ellen Lewis. <laughs> so that would be mine. Or maybe what, what to expect that you uh, maybe would have liked to have been prepared for. Hmm. Mm. I think it's important. I mean, it, it's an interesting thing we were we've been talking about recently that all these lawsuits going oh, on. Oh, I was about just going to say these, that about, about the internships. internships. Yeah. Yes. And internships oh. in small businesses, Absolutely. particularly in casting offices, were really key. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, almost everyone, with the exception of you, mm -hmm. was right. an intern before they you weren't had a paying time. job. Yep. She got paid right away. <laughs> she paid me. You know, you <laughs> back paid me. She went right to the desk, and that was that. Well, that was Julia backpaid me. I started with, I'm just remembering oh, that. You, what? Oh, sorry. Now I'm in trouble. I'm going to get a lawsuit. Yeah. But anyway, they, you know, it, it's just yeah. such a great thing. And I, and just listening, you know, listening and t listening. Come, you know, just so realizing yeah. sort of the depth of, of the job and just, you know, uh, but I because we've all had interns who wanted yeah. to be active right away. Yes. They wanted to do things right yeah. away and they didn't know. Yeah. They didn't know it's so an, it's fully. It's an apprenticeship. It, truly it is, is an, an apprenticeship. apprenticeship. It's like it's, it's yeah. it really is a, it's a classic craft. trade. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And somehow so figure out how to it. afford it. Right. You know, because it's, it's hard a, yes. in our offices, yeah. especially in New York. And if you're not part of a system mm -hmm. where you can just keep throwing money at things, but it's project to project, mm -hmm. I think it's really important to tell our younger selves: stick with it. It's true. Be patient. Figure out a way, whatever your needs are, to be able to be articulate and communicate with your boss. Like. You know what? I can only work. I think with you, I was like, I can work four days a week. You know, that's the start of it. And it's a shame. It's a <laughs> and shame. I need and I need all the holidays off. The holiday all off. my holidays. Which is Boxing <laughs> Day. Boxing Day. Anything. Give me anything off. <laughs> but but it is a shame with small businesses that you can't have that we should kind of in our in our spare time. Maybe we can figure out a way to bring back the internship because it's, it's like going to graduate school. It really is. 
Right, right. but it's not about. It is, but it isn't. Right. You that, can't. Yeah, you have to be in school to anyway. I won't get get started, but yeah. it's really kind of being it, yeah. mm -hmm. being honest to yourself. Is this really what you know? What is is for me? Because it's so specific. Well, I also think that you know. Um, and schools do this, and I don't think that they wiped out those internships. No, the schools but, didn't. But, but it in is great in the film business in general to be able to do internships. I did several different internships when I was at school in Chicago, and I kind of knew, okay, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Um, but if you start you know. a little older, like I started a little bit older, I wasn't in school anymore, mm -hmm. so I was able to, you know, right. now I don't know if you can do it. I don't know. Exactly. I, I did all my internships in school because I had a lot of student loans to pay back. So I was like, I'm getting a job as soon as I graduate. Well, one of the one of the ar one of the arguments about the against internships yeah. is, is is it sort of a self selecting selected group. In other words, you have to be able to afford to do it. But yeah. But then, you know, it's it's a it's a, a privileged job anyway, in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know. But it's very hard work too. Like everything in show business, I mean, right. there's no one falls into these positions, you know, just out of the. It is. It's a very stressful job. It is. I mean, we're not job. surgeons, but you know, it is a stressful yeah. job. Yeah, relative. You know. it, it is. Every every director, obviously, thinks their movie is the most, or their TV show is the most important thing, and they want you to you bleed know. alongside of them, and they it can be very intense. Yeah. It's very pressured, and you do that over and over and over again yeah. with every single person you work with. How do you control stress? Because I wonder, you know, what, what do you do to really... I didn't. I, didn't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so, you sort of try to use it to your, to your best ability? I think Laura's pretty good at it. I'm not good at it either. I can, I can, I just, I, I, I think I disassociate, um, but I really try to take weekends t to myself and do what I can do. But I, I think in a really queer way, it's you start the day and you just try to get as much as you can accomplished and try to stay very steady and really think and not think too much ahead. Right. I mean, it's different think, than anticipating what but the I, job needs, but yeah. I think again, we had a really great role model in Juliet yeah. because you know, we worked very consistently throughout our whole day. We never take lunches. Right. I mean, all that and you know, we I don't know if this is partly because we live in New York and not LA. So, you know, when agents are calling and like, can we have lunch? Can we? It's like, no, we don't leave the office. <laughs> and actually, we don't want you to come here. You guys. <laughs> leave us alone. <laughs> we like to sit at our desk and have our lunch. And we actually have a lot of fun. But we had a lot of fun. We yeah. had a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. We had a lot of so laughs and a lot of breaks. Mm -hmm. And intense as it gets, you know, we have the a lot of, we've so always important. had a great right. time. It's right. really important yeah. to have, I credit my office and the people that work with me, we're, we're team. Okay. I think I would okay. never be able to do this on my own. I wouldn't want to do yeah. it on my own. I love partnering and, and whatever that means, mm -hmm. you know, collaboration. Yeah, that's so important. You are a great role model for me too because now as a parent, um, you know, your priorities were always set so that you were at home at a certain point too and making sure that you were home for your kids. And so I feel like that was, you know, at a certain point I do have to kind of shut off at a certain point during the day too, that I can't, you know, and I'm, and I'm not so great at that time. I find myself, you know, emailing agents at like 11 o'clock at night, you know, after right. my kids Whatever you need, whatever like you that, need you know. to do, there's no rules. Patricia at like t two in the morning <laughs> she's written them. It's so like her child goes to bed and suddenly she's just like, that can release you stress. Right? Yeah. You release no, yeah. stress, I understand. I mean, you There's no rules, you just yeah. have to figure it out. Yeah, there are no rules. I, rem oh, I remember the get getting up the nerve to tell an important director that he could not call me after nine o'clock at night. <laughs> he did that? <laughs> well, how do you you have to, you have to have boundaries. He was okay, he was okay. That's what Woody's so great about. Oh, I'll just talk to you during nap time. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. He is great. Bring, bring your child to the office. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so great. Mm -hmm. But I think an important thing is how do you handle stress? It is important to have boundaries. It really is. Whatever those are, and again, you, you, you figure out yeah. figure out what that is. But it's very hard in our job. I, and, I, and also with the advent of all this internet and cell phones, because I started when there wasn't those things, and you leave the office, and then you, and then in the morning you deal with everything. Now, 
They, they call me at 7 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock at night. But that's where you set boundaries, right. though, and to, it's you really important. To, yeah. It's true, because you can be on call 24 hours you a are. day. You are. I feel like a doctor sometimes. I'm like, okay, we got this emergency. What do we do? You know, and it's, it's crazy. So, But that comes from all the Internet and cell phones and just the how easy it is to communicate yeah. with people now, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and one last question, since we're all here really because of Marion and her legacy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious, what, what do you think she would say if she knew we were here sort of celebrating her work in the film. Um, I have a feeling she'd have something very funny to say, but you probably would know better. Okay, Julia, channel Marion. <laughs> Marion would have loved this, and I really, I mean, it doesn't make me deeply sad, but I do wish she were here for this, because she really, she really wanted casting directors to be appreciated, mm -hmm. and she fought, she fought so hard for it, but she was very invested in it. Her career meant a huge amount to her. And um, she would have loved every minute of this. Every minute of it. That's sweet. Yeah, she would have. Yeah. Well, Wonderful. Very impressive, all of you. Thank you so much again for being here. Thank, thank you. you so much, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Made it easy for oh, us. Yeah. Thank you. I'm glad. <laughs>